Eliza Bournet, an associate editor of Book Page, and I am in New Orleans at ALA talking to Maureen Johnson about her new book, The Name of the Star, which is the first book in a new trilogy about an American girl who enrolls at a London boarding school on the day when murders start to take place. So thank you, Maureen, so much for talking to me. Thank you. Um, first, could you just tell me a little bit about this trilogy? It seems like it's a thriller. The tone seems a little bit different than some of your other books, like the Little Blue Envelope books. Um, why did you, first of all, how did you come up with the idea, and why did you decide to write a thriller? Uh, I read, I always wanted to write a mystery. In mm -hmm. fact, before I started writing YA, I spent years working on mysteries. I read mysteries as a kid constantly. I read mm -hmm. like two mystery books a day, and I always thought I was going to write a mystery, and I never seemed to. And I was in London one day, uh, doing research for another book, The Last Little Blue Envelope, mm -hmm. and I was on a historical tour. And something that was said during that tour sparked an idea in my mind, and I sort of sat down and started feverishly taking notes. Mm -hmm. um, and by the end of the day, I had this whole, other, basically the framework of the entire story, mm -hmm. and frantically scribbled in a notebook. Mm -hmm. So, well, I know that this is the first in a trilogy. Could you tell me a little bit about first what the yeah. book's about, and then also is it? I know Rory is your main character. Will, it, will all three of the books be about her? Yes. The story of The Name of the Star is a, a, girl, a girl named Rory who is from here in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Both of her parents are professors and they are relocated to London for a year. Mm -hmm. And she ends up in a school in East London, mm -hmm. uh, which is where the Burr murders originally took place in 1888. And when she arrives, on the day she arrives, someone begins recreating the Jack the Ripper murders. Uh, they, on the same dates, in the same ways, but it's, with the exception of the first one, the locations are all different. Mm -hmm. So London goes into a state of high alert and terror, and mm -hmm. the basic, basically because they know there are going to be murders, they know how people are going to be murdered, but they have no idea who or mm -hmm. where. And so it's a, and Rory ends up in the middle of all this because she inadvertently gets mixed up in the investigation and mm -hmm. becomes the target of the killer. So. I have to ask because we're in New Orleans yeah, right now. Right. What's the? Are you? Have you spent time? Have you spent a lot of time in Louisiana, or why? Um, why the New Orleans connection? Why I guess the New Orleans it connection. does kind of. It does. There is some atmosphere similarities. I guess. Yeah, I think that's when uh, because none of the story takes place in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. There is a supernatural element to the story mm -hmm. because Rory becomes involved with a branch of the English police force that is secret. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for a place that she could come from that had a lot of character, because you hear a lot about Rory's family and mm -hmm. the people back home. And the first place that came to mind was New Orleans, which is, mm -hmm. there's this the story involves ghosts. Mm -hmm. And so New Orleans is a place definitely within the United States that's known for ghost stories, mm -hmm. for, colorful, for colorful characters. Um, so it just seemed like a natural fit that she should be from Louisiana, mm -hmm. from New Orleans specifically. Mm -hmm. Well, um... Book page follows you on Twitter, and we read your blog, and you definitely have a robust following. Um, readers, you know, I think. I spend a love, lot of time online. Love, <laughs> love seeing what you have to say online. So, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about how social media has helped you as an author. If you, you know, obviously you enjoy connecting with readers in that way. Um, does that? Is it something that you do for fun? Does it help you with your process? Do you just like being able to you know, communicate with readers directly? Or? I do it for fun, and it's, it feels very natural to me because mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it for any other reason. Like I mm -hmm. don't, I know that it, I don't believe in marketing. Like I know that's wrong. There are people that are good at it, but I don't. I'm not one of them, and I have no passion for marketing. Mm -hmm. I just like to use it, and basically, it's like I get a chance to sit there and bother thousands of people. It's like mm -hmm. I'm sitting next to them mumbling all the time, which, mm -hmm. which is what I like about it. So I have no sort of scheme or plan on how I do mm -hmm. things. I just sort of talk mm -hmm. uh, all day. Before, I would just, you know, if I was sitting next to someone, I would also just sit there and chatter to them all day or stick post-it notes to them. Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm just getting to stick post-it notes to thousands and thousands of people. Mm -hmm. It's very satisfying. So what is your favorite part of your job? Writing books for a lot of good parts of my job. It's a good job to have. I mean, mm -hmm. I always, I was always wanted to write, like, so I'm getting to do the thing that I like to do most, and mm -hmm. really the only thing I'm good at. So it's a good thing I'm doing it. Otherwise, I'd be very hungry and probably living in a van down by the river. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, finally, we are at ALA right now. So, 
I was wondering if you had a favorite library or a favorite librarian or a memory from spending time in the library as a child, kind of why libraries have been important to you in your life. Because when I was a kid, I mean, I, I, they didn't have a teen librarian in the library when I was a kid, and we didn't have a school librarian where I went to school inside of a convent. Um, we had a little a nun who was 95 years old, who was not a librarian, and her main job was to keep us from putting bent dimes in the copy machine. That was her single obsession in life. I don't think she liked books. Mm -hmm. So when I see really enthusiastic teen librarians, I, I think I wish I had had such a librarian in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, you know, that is how I got to read as a kid. I had an insatiable reading appetite and being able to go to the library and take out ten books. I mean, that, you know, and that, that's what made, you know, made my life. It's made me, so I can't imagine life without it. library. It's just, it's just a given, you know, it's just a lifeblood of what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you so much, Maureen, for talking to me, and I know book page readers will be very excited about the name of the star. I hope you guys so, like it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.